This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV. I'm at CES 2011. I'm joined by Steve Venuti, president of HDMI Licensing. Welcome to the program, Steve. Thank you very much, Neil. Good to be here. Now, you know, Steve, it's been an amazing year. The last time we, we did this, Sony hadn't officially gone into 3D gaming. I mean, of course, Sony PlayStation fully supports stereoscopic 3D through HDMI. We're seeing PC support for 3D on, on HDMI. What are your thoughts on 3D in the last year? Well, I think uh, you said it. You know, we knew last year was going to be a big year for 3D. Uh, what we uh, didn't know was how big. It was very big. And you're right. The PS3, the Xbox, uh, the uh, the game, the game card manufacturers, the gamers themselves, and the game, the game, uh, the game content people all got behind it and really saw, saw that 3D could bring a lot more to the gaming environment. Now, for those unfamiliar, you know, people, they buy a TV and they don't realize just how important the different components are that makes 3D work. So if you could just quickly elaborate what HDMI does and what your, your components do for the 3D industry. So HDMI essentially defined the way that 3D files, let's say, the 3D video images would be packaged, transmitted, and unpackaged so that you could get it from one place to another. That's what we did. So you need to have that technology inside your devices. Now, some devices, the PS3 is a good example, the Xbox another, they can be firmware upgraded to be able to handle this because they have so much strong processing power, they're able to do that. Other devices may not be able to, and you need to buy, you may need to buy a new device to get 3D capabilities. But you'll need a TV with, uh, you know, the ability to do the kind of refresh rate required for 3D. You'll need a source device that can transmit 3D, um, but that's what you need. So what I'm gathering, HDMI is not just a connector, but it's really the, the pathway to get 3D content to the display. And I take it, I mean, you're promoting HDMI 1.4a here, so I take it that's the current spec. And really, so when people are shopping for a television, they need to make sure that they're supporting HDMI 1.4, 1.4a, I gather? Well, what I would say is, I kind of reverse it, because our versions include a lot of different options. So 1.4a could have 4K capabilities, or it could have audio return channel or 3D or a host of other things. So rather than look for 1.4a, I would say look for the features you want. If you want a 3D set, you want a 3D source device, look for 3D. It'll have 1.4 powering it, but you don't need to know that. You need to know that you want 3D. So look for the feature, not necessarily the technology. Excellent. So Steve, maybe you can help us solve uh, a kind of a mystery. In, you know, HDMI 1.4 has been very successful in the console market, getting console games 3D compliant, especially Sony PlayStation is an example. Through a firmware update, it's now possible to play a lot of games on Sony PlayStation in full 3D compatibility. PC, we're starting to see the same thing. NVIDIA has their 3D TV play initiative, which lets you take a PC and work on pretty much any HDMI 1.4 compliant 3D HDTV. AMD is doing the same thing. They have something called HD3D. Now, one of the things that leaves a lot of gamers scratching their heads is why they're limited to 1280 by 720p at 60 frames per second on a PC. Uh, it seems more of a console limitation than it does on PC. Could you can you elaborate as to why this why this is? Well, the reason for that is actually fairly simple. We have defined in the specification for true 1080p 60 3D. So that's a lot of bandwidth. That's nearly 10 gigabits per second of bandwidth. The, the, the processors in the PC can handle this much processing power. They've got plenty of processing power. But the limiting factor there is actually the chip that's got to send that over the link and the chip over here that's got to receive it. So there are not chips on the market yet that can absolutely send that uncompressed video data at that speed, even though the, the, the cards may be able to process at a lot higher rate. So those chips are coming out in the market very soon, and then we'll be able to get true 1080p left right eye. Until then, it's 720p or it's some frame compatible format that gives you a, a less than 1080p uh, experience. So what I'm gathering is the spec itself is intact. It meets the needs of 3D at 1080p, 60 hertz per eye or 60 frames per eye. But what's happening is the actual hardware or the chips that drive you know, the AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards 
aren't quite there yet. There's certain performance requirements to make this possible, and it's, it doesn't quite exist just yet. Am I, am I correct? You're absolutely right. If you think about our, our specification, we tell what is possible, but not necessarily what will what is going to happen or can happen in the near future. For example, when we launched in 2003, our spec talked about 1080p. There was no device that could do 1080p. There was no silicon. There was no chips that could support that. But we knew it would come. So the specification clearly said, here's what you're going to have to do to do 1080p. But then the device manufacturers have to catch up to be able to get the hardware to run at that speed. Same thing with 1080p dual left right eye 3D. Okay, well, the good news for gamers interested in gaming on PC and 3D is that even at 720p, the 3D is extremely immersive. Of course, it's very popular on PlayStation, yep. as it should be on PC as well. And for advanced gamers, there are ways through like a side-by-side -side format that you can get 1080p with some, some trade-offs, But that's and that's explained on mtbs3d.com in the guides. But thanks for joining us, Steve. You've been very helpful. You've, you've helped solve a big mystery that everyone's been asking. Well, Thank you. We're glad to be here. Glad to be able to help. Good to see you again. Excellent. So this is Neil Schneider with Steve Venuti, president of H HDMI Licensing at CES 2011.